Banff Springs Hotel, Alberta, Canada. Haunted Paranormal Epicenter Chapter 1 Arrival at the Springs The dense fog enveloped the grand facade of the Banff Springs Hotel as the team of paranormal investigators stepped out of their van. The towering structure, with its gothic spires and stone walls, seemed to loom over them, casting an imposing shadow that was accentuated by the dim twilight. Looks like something straight out of a horror movie, remarked Derek, the team's tech specialist, as he adjusted the straps of his equipment-laden backpack. Or a fairy tale, countered Jenna, the team's historian and researcher, her eyes reflecting a mixture of awe and curiosity. It's magnificent. Ethan, the team leader, took a moment to absorb the sight before him. Remember, folks, we're here to find evidence, not get lost in legends. Stick to the plan. The initial skepticism was evident. Most of the team, seasoned investigators who had explored countless haunted locations, approached each new case with a healthy dose of doubt. But the Banff Springs Hotel, with its rich history and numerous paranormal claims, was a challenge they couldn't resist. As they entered the grand lobby, they were greeted by the soft glow of chandeliers and the distant hum of conversation. The hotel, despite its age, was a symbol of luxury and opulence. Guests milled about, some checking in, others enjoying a drink by the fireplace. To the casual observer, it was just another busy evening at a popular tourist destination. But the team felt it, the undercurrent of something else, something that lurked just beneath the surface. An eerie feeling, like the quiet before a storm. First impressions? Ethan asked as they gathered in a corner of the lobby. It's heavy, replied Lisa, the team's psychic medium. There's a lot of energy here, both good and bad. Derek rolled his eyes. Every old building has energy, Lisa. It's called history. Lisa shot him a pointed look. This is different. You'll see. Before the banter could continue, an elderly man approached them. Dressed in a tweed suit, with a mane of white hair and a beard to match, he introduced himself as Mr. Harold, a local historian. I heard you folks are here to investigate the shall we say, less tangible aspects of our beloved hotel, he said with a twinkle in his eye. That's right, Ethan replied. We're hoping to get a better understanding of the stories and legends associated with this place. Mr. Harold nodded. Ah, where to begin? The Banff Springs Hotel has seen its fair share of history since it was built in 1888. It's been a symbol of luxury in the Rocky Mountains, a place where the elite come to relax and enjoy the natural beauty. But like all old places, it has its secrets. He went on to share tales of the hotel's haunted past. The ghost bride who met her tragic end on the staircase. The mysterious room 873 where a family was brutally murdered. And Sam the bellman who still roams the halls helping guests long after his death. The team listened intently, each story adding another layer to the rich tapestry of the hotel's history. Jenna took notes, her historian's mind already piecing together the facts from the fiction. As Mr. Harold concluded his tales, he left them with a word of caution. The spirits here, they're not to be trifled with, they have their stories, their pain, their regrets. If you seek to understand them, approach with respect. Every soul, living or departed, has a story worth telling. The weight of his words hung in the air as the team made their way to their rooms. The first night's stay was uneventful, but the anticipation of the investigation ahead kept them on edge. As they settled in, 
The hotel's walls seemed to whisper, beckoning them to uncover the mysteries that lay within. And as the clock struck midnight, the true investigation began. The Banff Springs Hotel, with its legends and spirits, was about to reveal its secrets to those daring enough to listen. Chapter 2 The first encounter the night was still, the only sound being the distant hum of the hotel's machinery and the soft rustling of the trees outside. Jenna lay in her bed, her mind racing with the stories Mr. Harold had shared. Just as she was about to drift into sleep, a faint sound reached her ears, a soft, melancholic tune, reminiscent of wedding music. She sat up, straining her ears. The sound seemed to be coming from the direction of the ballroom. Curiosity peaked. Jenna slipped on her shoes and made her way down the dimly lit corridor. As she approached the ballroom, the music grew louder, the haunting notes echoing through the vast space. Jenna slowly pushed open the ballroom doors, half expecting to see a late-night event in progress. But the room was empty. The grand chandeliers cast a soft glow over the polished floor, but there was no sign of any musicians or a music player. Yet, the music continued, filling the room with its sorrowful melody. Suddenly, a cold breeze swept through the ballroom, sending a shiver down Jenna's spine. The music stopped abruptly, leaving an oppressive silence in its wake. Jenna felt a palpable presence, as if she were being watched. She was about to retreat when an elderly woman, dressed in a vintage gown, approached her. You heard it too, didn't you? The woman asked, her voice trembling. Jenna nodded. The music. Do you know where it's coming from? The woman sighed, her eyes filled with sadness. That. My dear, is the lament of the ghost bride. I've heard it many times over the years. It's her way of reliving her tragic end. Jenna's heart raced. The ghost bride? Mr. Harold mentioned her, but I thought it was just a legend. The woman shook her head. Oh, it's no legend. I was but a young girl when it happened. She was the most beautiful bride I'd ever seen. Her wedding was the talk of the town, held right here in this ballroom. But fate had other plans. As she descended the staircase, her dress caught fire from a candle. In her panic, she tripped and fell, breaking her neck. The entire hotel was in shock. Such a vibrant life, snuffed out in an instant. Jenna felt a lump in her throat. The weight of the tragedy was overwhelming. That's... that's heartbreaking. The elderly woman nodded. Every now and then, she returns, dancing alone in this ballroom, the music playing as she relives her final moments. Some say she's searching for her groom, hoping for one last dance. Jenna felt a deep empathy for the ghost bride. The thought of such a young, hopeful life cut short was devastating. Is there any way to help her? To let her know she's not alone? The woman smiled sadly. Many have tried, but she's trapped in her own loop of sorrow. All we can do is remember her and hope she finds peace. As Jenna returned to her room, she couldn't shake off the feeling of melancholy. She shared her experience with the team, and they were equally moved by the ghost bride's story. Ethan, ever the pragmatist, saw an opportunity. This could be our first real piece of evidence. If we can capture the music or even a glimpse of the ghost bride, it would be groundbreaking. Lisa, sensing the emotional weight of the situation, added, but we must approach this with sensitivity and respect. She's not just an apparition, she's a soul in pain. After a brief discussion, 
the team decided to set up their equipment in the ballroom that night. Cameras, microphones, and EVP recorders were strategically placed, hoping to capture any paranormal activity. As the clock neared midnight, the team gathered in the ballroom, the air thick with anticipation. They sat in silence, waiting, hoping for a sign. Hours passed, and just as they were about to call it a night, the faint sound of wedding music filled the room. The team watched in awe as the spectral figure of a bride appeared, dancing alone, her gown flowing gracefully around her. The moment was both beautiful and heartbreaking. The team, usually so focused on evidence and facts, was moved by the raw emotion of the scene before them. As the music faded and the ghost bride disappeared, the team was left in stunned silence. They had witnessed something truly extraordinary, a moment that would stay with them forever. And as dawn broke, they knew their investigation had only just begun. The Banff Springs Hotel, with its rich history and restless spirits, had many more secrets to reveal. Chapter 3 Room 873's secrets The morning sun streamed through the ornate windows of the Banff Springs Hotel, casting a warm glow over its historic corridors. But for the team of paranormal investigators, the allure of the morning was overshadowed by the anticipation of their next exploration, Room 873. Over breakfast, Jenna shared what she had discovered from the hotel's archives. Room 873 has been a subject of numerous reports over the years. Guests have spoken of chilling encounters, unexplained noises, and even apparitions. But what's most intriguing is that the room itself has been bricked up. No one has accessed it for decades. Derek, fiddling with a night vision camera, looked up. Bricked up? Why would they do that? Lisa, her intuitive senses always on high alert, replied, to contain something. Or perhaps, someone. Ethan, ever the leader, set the tone for the day. Our goal today is to gather as much evidence as possible from that area. We need to understand what happened in room 873 and why it's been sealed off. The team made their way to the eighth floor. The opulence of the hotel was evident everywhere, but as they approached room 873, the atmosphere changed. The temperature dropped noticeably, and an oppressive silence enveloped the corridor. Derek set up the night vision cameras, pointing them towards the bricked-up entrance of room 873. Almost immediately, the screens displayed shadowy figures moving erratically outside the room. They were formless, shifting, but undeniably there. Ethan, his voice barely above a whisper, said, Let's start the EVP session. We need to know who or what is trapped behind that wall. Jenna began the session, her voice calm and measured. We are here to communicate. Can you tell us your name? A few moments of silence followed before the EVP recorder picked up a faint whisper, Help. Me. Dot dot quote. The team exchanged glances, the weight of the situation pressing down on them. Lisa, her face pale, continued, What happened in room 873? Another pause. Then a chilling scream echoed through the recorder, followed by a series of disjointed whispers, trapped. Pain. Darkness. Suddenly, Derek recoiled, his face a mask of shock. Something. Something just touched me. He looked down at his arm, where a cold handprint was forming, its icy imprint a stark contrast against his skin. Ethan trying to keep the situation under control, said, stay calm. We knew this wouldn't be easy. We're dealing with powerful energies here. 
Jenna, ever the historian, reflected on the tragedy of room 873. The stories say that a man, in a fit of rage, murdered his wife and daughter in that room before taking his own life. The hotel, in an attempt to forget the gruesome event, sealed off the room. But it seems the souls trapped there haven't found peace. Lisa, tears in her eyes, added, they're in pain. So much pain. We need to help them. The team, deeply affected by the events, decided to regroup and research further. They needed to find a way to access room 873, to confront the lingering energy and perhaps, offer some form of closure to the tormented souls within. As night fell, the corridor outside room 873 came alive with activity. The night vision cameras captured more shadowy figures, and the EVP recordings became more frantic. The team realized they were on the cusp of a significant breakthrough. But with the increasing paranormal activity came a growing sense of dread. The tragedy of room 873 was not just a story. It was a palpable force, a lingering energy that demanded to be acknowledged. And as the team prepared for another night of investigation, they knew they were about to delve deeper into the mysteries of the Banff Springs Hotel, to confront the ghosts of its past and perhaps offer them a chance at redemption. Chapter 4 Sam's Guidance The Banff Springs Hotel, with its sprawling corridors and countless rooms, was a maze of history and mystery. As the team prepared for another night of investigation, they decided to explore the ninth floor, which had its own share of whispered tales. Ethan and Lisa were adjusting the settings on their EVP recorders when they heard the soft chime of an elevator. The doors slid open to reveal a bellman, dressed in an old-fashioned uniform, complete with a pillbox hat and white gloves. His appearance was a stark contrast to the modern surroundings but his friendly demeanor put them at ease. Good evening, he greeted with a warm smile. It seems you have your hands full. May I assist? Gratefully, Ethan handed him a case of equipment. Thank you. We're setting up for an investigation. Have you heard any unusual stories about this floor? The bellman chuckled. Oh, plenty. This hotel has been around for a long time, and every corner has its tail. But remember, not all spirits are restless. Some, like me, just enjoy helping out. Lisa, sensing something amiss, looked up sharply. What do you mean, like you? But before the bellman could reply, a call came from down the corridor. Jenna and Derek were signaling them to join. Ethan and Lisa turned their attention away for a mere second, and when they looked back, the bellman was gone. The elevator doors remained closed, and the corridor was empty. Stunned, Ethan approached a nearby hotel staff member. Excuse me, did you see where the bellman went? The one who was just here? The staff member. A young woman with a puzzled expression, replied, Bellman? Sir, we haven't had Bellman dressed like that in decades. The only one I can think of who wore such a uniform was Sam. Jenna, overhearing the conversation, joined in. Sam? As in Sam the Bellman? The staff member nodded. Yes, Sam Macaulay. He worked here in the 1960s and 70s. Loved this hotel and its guests. Even said he'd come back to haunt it in a good way, to continue helping out. The realization hit the team like a ton of bricks. They had just encountered one of the hotel's most legendary spirits. Gathering in one of the rooms, the team recounted their experience. Derek. Ever the skeptic, was hesitant to jump to conclusions. 
It could have been anyone. Maybe he was a staff member dressed in an old uniform. Lisa, her intuition on high alert, disagreed. No, there was an energy about him. Familiar, yet, otherworldly. I believe we met Sam. Ethan, deep in thought, proposed a plan. If it was Sam, and he's as helpful as the legends say, maybe he can assist us in our investigation. We should try to communicate with him. The team set up a spirit box, a device known to facilitate communication with the other side. With the lights dimmed and the room bathed in an eerie blue glow, they began their session. Sam, if you're here with us, can you give us a sign? Lisa asked, her voice gentle. A few moments of static-filled silence ensued before a clear voice came through, always here to help. The team exchanged astonished glances. The voice, warm and friendly, matched the bellman's demeanor perfectly. Jenna, her voice choked with emotion, spoke next. Sam, we've heard so much about your dedication to this hotel. Why do you remain here? More static, then, this is home. Guests are family. Always here to serve. The emotional depth of the moment was palpable. Here was a spirit, bound by his love and dedication to the hotel, still serving guests long after his passing. The team, often focused on capturing evidence, was moved by the raw, human connection they were experiencing. Ethan, his voice filled with respect, said, Sam, we're here to understand the stories of this hotel to give a voice to those who no longer have one. Can you guide us? The spirit box crackled before Sam's voice came through again. Listen to their stories. Respect their memories. I'll be here, guiding. As the session concluded, the team sat in reflective silence. Their encounter with Sam had shifted their perspective. It wasn't just about capturing evidence. It was about understanding and respecting the stories of the past. And with Sam's guidance, they felt better equipped to navigate the mysteries of the Banff Springs Hotel, to uncover its secrets and give voice to its silent inhabitants. Chapter 5 The Doomed Staircase The Banff Springs Hotel, with its intricate architecture and grand design, boasted many features that caught the eye. But none was as enigmatic as the staircase that many referred to as doomed. It was an elegant spiral of polished wood and ornate metalwork, but its beauty was overshadowed by the whispers of accidents and unexplained events that seemed to plague its steps. The team had heard of the staircase's reputation, but it wasn't until Derek, while setting up equipment, suddenly tripped and tumbled down a few steps that they gave it any real attention. Damn it! Derek exclaimed, picking himself up, his face a shade paler. I swear, something pushed me. Ethan rushed over, helping him to his feet. You okay? Derek nodded, rubbing his arm. Yeah, just a bit shaken. But I'm telling you, it felt like a hand on my back. Lisa, ever sensitive to the energies around her, approached the staircase cautiously. There's a heaviness here. It's as if the air is thick with memories. Jenna, flipping through her notes, remarked, there have been numerous reports of accidents on this staircase. Guests tripping, feeling dizzy, even some claiming to be pushed. It's as if the staircase itself is a focal point for the hotel's paranormal activity. Determined to get to the bottom of the mystery, the team set up night vision cameras focused on the staircase. Hours passed as they monitored the feeds, waiting for any sign of activity. It was close to midnight when Lisa, staring intently at one of the screens, whispered, There. Did you see that? 
The team crowded around the monitor. On the screen, shadowy figures seemed to flit up and down the staircase. They were formless, almost smoke-like, but their movement was deliberate, as if they were retracing steps from a bygone era. Ethan, his voice filled with a mix of excitement and trepidation, said, We need to dig deeper. This staircase, it's more than just a set of steps. It's a conduit, a bridge between the past and the present. Jenna, always eager to delve into the history, shared, There are tales that this staircase was the very spot where the ghost bride had her tragic fall. And there are other stories, too, of heartbreaks, farewells, and clandestine meetings. It's as if the emotions of all those events have imprinted on the very fabric of this place. The weight of the revelations hung heavily in the room. The team, realizing the significance of the staircase in the grand tapestry of the hotel's paranormal narrative, decided on a bold move. We need to conduct a seance, Lisa proposed. If we can communicate directly with the spirits tied to this staircase, we might be able to understand their stories, their pain. With the decision made, the team prepared for the seance. Candles were lit, forming a protective circle around the base of the staircase. Lisa, as the medium, took her position at the center, with the rest of the team seated around her. The room grew cold as Lisa began to chant, her voice echoing through the vast corridors of the hotel. The candles flickered as if responding to an unseen breeze. Spirits of the staircase, we seek to communicate. Share your stories, your memories. We are here to listen. A heavy silence followed, broken only by the soft creaking of the hotel's timbers. Then, a voice, soft and distant, whispered, Lost. Forever lost. Another voice joined in, betrayed. Left behind. Dot dot quote. The air grew thick with emotion, sorrow, anger, regret. The team, even the usually skeptical Derek, felt the weight of the centuries-old tragedies that had unfolded on the staircase. As the seance continued, the spirits shared their tales. A young woman heartbroken after being jilted at the altar, who threw herself from the top of the stairs. A soldier, returning from war, who waited on those steps for a lover who never came. And, of course, the ghost bride, forever searching for her lost love. The seance concluded with a plea from Lisa. Find peace, move on. Your stories have been heard your pain acknowledged. As the candles were extinguished and the equipment packed away, the team reflected on the night's events. The doomed staircase, with its tales of love, loss, and tragedy, had left an indelible mark on their souls. And as dawn broke, the Banff Springs Hotel, with its myriad of spirits and stories, continued to stand as a testament to the past, a bridge between the world of the living and the departed. Chapter 6 The bartender's warning the evening had settled in, casting the Banff Springs Hotel in a soft, golden hue. The team, after a long day of investigation, decided to unwind in the hotel's lounge. The ambiance was a mix of old-world charm and modern luxury, with plush seating, dim lighting, and the soft hum of whispered conversations. Derek, feeling particularly parched, approached the bar. The bartender, a tall man with sharp features and dressed in an old-fashioned uniform, acknowledged him with a nod. What can I get you? A whiskey, neat, Derek replied, taking a seat at the bar. The bartender moved with an elegance and precision that seemed out of place in the modern setting. He poured the drink and slid it towards Derek. On the house, he said with a knowing smile. 
Derek raised an eyebrow but accepted the gesture. Thanks. It's been a long day. The bartender leaned in, his voice low and serious. This hotel, it's seen more than its fair share of long days. And longer nights. Be careful how deep you delve into its secrets. Derek, taken aback, replied, What do you mean? The bartender glanced around, ensuring no one was within earshot. There are things in this hotel, memories, spirits, that don't take kindly to being disturbed. Some secrets are best left alone. Derek, feeling a chill despite the warmth of the lounge, nodded slowly. Thanks for the warning. The bartender simply smiled, his eyes reflecting a depth of knowledge and sadness. Just remember, respect goes a long way. Derek returned to the team, his face pale. He recounted his encounter with the bartender, emphasizing the warning. Jenna, her historian instincts kicking in, mused, the bartender. I've read about him. Guests have reported being served by a spectral bartender who vanishes after giving sage advice or warnings. Ethan, ever the leader, pondered the implications. This changes things. We're not just dealing with residual energies or imprints. These are intelligent entities, aware of our presence and our intentions. Lisa, her voice filled with emotion, added, we need to tread carefully. We're guests in their home. We need to respect their boundaries. The team, gathered around a corner table, delved deep into a discussion. The emotional weight of their encounters, from the ghost bride to Sam the bellman, and now the bartender, was taking its toll. Jenna, her voice choked with emotion, said, Every spirit we've encountered has a story, a tragedy, a moment that defines them. We need to approach our investigation with empathy and understanding. Derek, the memory of the bartender's warning fresh in his mind, added, and caution. We're walking a fine line between discovery and intrusion. Ethan, taking a moment to gather his thoughts, said, we set out to uncover the mysteries of this hotel, to give a voice to the spirits that reside here. But we need to remember that they're not just stories or evidence. They're souls, with emotions, memories, and desires. The team, united in their purpose, made a collective decision. They would continue their investigation, but with a renewed focus on respect and understanding. They would listen more than they spoke, observe more than they intruded. And as the night deepened, the Banff Springs Hotel, with its myriad of spirits and stories, watched over them, its walls echoing with the whispers of the past and the hopes of the present. Chapter 7 Unraveling Histories The Banff Springs Hotel, with its towering spires and grand architecture, was not just a testament to luxury and opulence but also a keeper of secrets. Its walls, if they could speak, would tell tales of love, loss, joy, and tragedy. And it was these tales that the team sought to uncover. Jenna, with her historian's passion, had managed to gain access to the hotel's archives, a dimly lit room in the basement filled with dusty shelves, old ledgers, newspaper clippings, and faded photographs. The air was thick with the scent of old paper and the weight of memories. As the team sifted through the archives, they began to piece together the rich tapestry of the hotel's history. Derek, examining a stack of old newspapers, exclaimed, Look at this! An article from 1932 about a grand ball held here and there's a mention of a tragic accident involving a bride. Lisa, peering over his shoulder, replied, The Ghost Bride. 
This could be the very incident that led to her haunting. Ethan, engrossed in a leather-bound ledger, remarked, There are guest logs here, dating back decades. Names, dates, even notes about their stays. Some of these notes. They hint at strange occurrences, unexplained events. Jenna, her eyes shining with excitement, held up a series of black and white photographs. These are incredible. They show the hotel in its early days, the guests, the staff. Look, here's one of the old bar, and there's the bartender. The team gathered around, examining the photograph. The bartender, with his sharp features and old-fashioned uniform, was unmistakable. It was the very same spectral bartender who had warned Derek. As the hours passed, a pattern began to emerge. Many incidents, some tragic, some mysterious, had been reported over the years. But what was even more intriguing was the realization that some of these incidents had been covered up, never making it to the public eye. Ethan, deep in thought, said, it's as if the hotel, in its quest to maintain its reputation, silenced these stories. But the spirits, they remember. They're trying to tell us what was kept hidden. Lisa, her voice filled with emotion, added, we need to give them a voice. We need to let their stories be heard. The weight of their discoveries, the realization of the depth of the hotel's history, filled the team with a renewed sense of purpose. They decided to hold a group EVP session in the main lobby, the heart of the hotel, where the energies of the past and present converged. As night fell, the team set up their equipment in the grand lobby. The chandeliers cast a soft glow, and the echoes of whispered conversations from days gone by seemed to linger in the air. Ethan began the session, his voice reverberating through the vast space. Spirits of the Banff Springs Hotel, we are here to listen. Share your stories, your memories. We seek to understand. The EVP recorder crackled to life, and a chorus of voices began to speak. Some were clear, others faint, but each had a tale to tell. A woman's voice, filled with sorrow, whispered, lost. Forever waiting. Dot dot quote. A man's voice, tinged with regret, murmured, should have been there, failed her. Dot dot quote. The voices continued, each sharing snippets of their stories, their emotions raw and palpable. The team, deeply affected, listened with rapt attention their respect for the stories of the past growing with each revelation. As the session concluded, Jenna, tears in her eyes, said, We've only scratched the surface. There's so much more to uncover, so many more stories to be told. Ethan, his voice filled with determination, replied, And we will. We owe it to them, to the spirits that call this hotel home. We will give them a voice, let their stories be heard. And as dawn broke, the Banff Springs Hotel, with its rich history and myriad of secrets, stood as a silent witness to the team's quest to unravel its mysteries, to give voice to the silent inhabitants of its hallowed halls. Chapter 8 Whispers in the Walls The Banff Springs Hotel, with its sprawling corridors and grand rooms, was a labyrinth of memories. As the days turned into nights and the team delved deeper into the hotel's mysteries, a new phenomenon began to emerge, whispers in the walls. Guests, both past and present, had often reported unexplained noises throughout the hotel. Soft murmurs in empty rooms, footsteps in deserted hallways, and the faintest hint of music from bygone eras. These reports, once dismissed as mere imagination or the creaking of an old building, 
now took on a new significance. One evening, as the team was reviewing their recordings in the lounge, Lisa's headphones crackled with a sound that made her sit upright. Listen to this, she said, playing back a segment of the recording. The room was filled with the soft, unmistakable sound of a woman's voice, singing a lullaby from another time. The words were indistinct, but the emotion, love, longing, and a touch of sadness, was palpable. Ethan, his eyes wide, remarked, that's, that's incredible. It's so clear. Jenna, ever the historian, added, it sounds like a lullaby from the early 1900s. This could be a mother singing to her child, a memory imprinted on the very walls of this hotel. As the team continued to review their recordings, more voices emerged. A man's voice, filled with regret, murmuring about a missed opportunity. A child's voice, laughing and calling out to play. And, most hauntingly, a soft plea, help me, find peace. Dot dot quote. The emotional weight of these discoveries was immense. Derek, usually the most skeptical of the group, had tears in his eyes. These aren't just sounds or anomalies. These are voices, stories, souls reaching out to us. Lisa, her voice filled with empathy, said, they're trapped here, reliving their memories, their joys, and their sorrows. We need to help them, give them closure. The team, united in their purpose, decided to spend a night in the most haunted areas of the hotel. Armed with their equipment and a determination to communicate with the spirits, they set out. Ethan and Jenna chose the ballroom, the site of the ghost bride's tragic end. As midnight approached, they began to hear the faintest hint of wedding music, and a cold breeze enveloped the room. Derek and Lisa, meanwhile, ventured to the doomed staircase. As they sat in silence, the soft murmurs of conversations from another era filled the air. They listened, enraptured, as tales of love, loss, and hope played out before them. The night was filled with revelations. The team, once skeptical and driven by curiosity, now believed wholeheartedly in the paranormal. The Banff Springs Hotel, with its whispers in the walls, had transformed them. As dawn broke, the team gathered in the lounge, sharing their experiences and reflecting on the night's events. Jenna, her voice filled with emotion, said, This hotel, with its rich history and myriad of spirits, has taught us the importance of listening, of understanding, and of respecting the stories of the past. Ethan, his eyes filled with determination, added, We have a responsibility now to these spirits and to ourselves. We will continue our investigation, delve deeper into the hotel's mysteries, and give voice to the silent inhabitants of its hallowed halls. And as the sun cast its golden glow on the Banff Springs Hotel, the team, united in their purpose and belief, prepared for another day of discovery, of understanding, and of giving voice to the whispers in the walls. Chapter 9. The Ballroom Dance The Grand Ballroom of the Banff Springs Hotel was a marvel of architecture and design. Crystal chandeliers hung from the ceiling, casting a soft, ethereal glow. The polished wooden floor reflected the light, creating an ambiance of timeless elegance. It was in this ballroom, steeped in history and memories, that the team would have one of their most profound encounters. It was close to midnight, and the hotel had settled into a deep silence. The team, having heard numerous accounts of the ghost bride's appearances in the ballroom, had set up their equipment, hoping to capture evidence of her presence. As the clock struck twelve, a soft, haunting melody began to play. 
The team looked around, trying to identify the source, but the room was empty. The music, reminiscent of a bygone era, grew louder, filling the ballroom with its melancholic notes. And then, she appeared. The ghost bride, in her ethereal beauty, stood at the far end of the ballroom. Her wedding dress, once pristine and white, now bore the marks of time and tragedy. The train of her gown, a flame, trailed behind her as she began to dance. The team watched in awe, captivated by the poignant sight before them. The ghost bride moved with grace and elegance, her every step telling a story of love, loss, and longing. Her eyes, filled with sorrow, seemed to search for someone, a lost love perhaps. Jenna, tears streaming down her face, whispered, she's searching for him, her groom. She's trapped in this moment, reliving her tragedy over and over again. Ethan, feeling a deep emotional connection to the spirit, decided to attempt communication. Using the spirit box, he reached out, we see you. We feel your pain. Tell us your story. The music stopped, and the ballroom was plunged into silence. The ghost bride, her gaze fixed on Ethan, began to move towards him. As she drew closer, the spirit box crackled to life, and a soft, feminine voice echoed, lost. Forever waiting. Danger. Dot dot quote. The message, though fragmented, was clear. The ghost bride was warning them of a looming danger, a threat that they had not yet perceived. Derek, his voice filled with urgency, said, We need to be careful. We're not alone in this. There are other forces at play, entities that might not be as benevolent as the ghost bride. Lisa, her instincts kicking in, added, We've delved deep into the hotel's mysteries, uncovered its secrets. But we need to remember that with knowledge comes responsibility. And danger. The team, realizing the gravity of the situation, decided to regroup and reassess their approach. The ghost bride, her message delivered, began to fade her form becoming translucent until she disappeared entirely. Ethan, deep in thought, said, We came here seeking answers, to give voice to the spirits that call this hotel home. But we need to be prepared for the consequences of our actions. Jenna, her historian's passion undiminished, replied, The stories of the past are powerful, filled with emotions and memories. We need to approach them with respect and understanding. The team, united in their purpose and determination, prepared for the challenges ahead. The Banff Springs Hotel, with its rich history and myriad of spirits, had once again revealed its mysteries, its whispers of the past guiding them on their quest for answers. And as dawn broke, casting the hotel in a soft, golden hue, the team knew that their journey was far from over. The ballroom dance was just the beginning, a glimpse into the depths of the hotel's secrets and the challenges that lay ahead. Chapter 10 The locked door the Banff Springs Hotel, with its sprawling corridors and countless rooms, was a maze of history and mystery. Each corner held a story, each room a secret. But nothing could have prepared the team for what lay behind the locked door. It was Derek who stumbled upon it first. Tucked away in a forgotten wing of the hotel, the door stood out due to its ornate design and the peculiar symbols etched into its surface. A heavy padlock, rusted with age, secured it. Guys, you need to see this, Derek called out his voice echoing down the corridor. The team gathered, their curiosity piqued. Ethan, examining the symbols, remarked, these aren't just random etchings. They're sigils, used in occult practices. 
Jenna, her historian's mind racing, added, I've come across these symbols in my research. They're associated with ancient rituals and ceremonies, often used to invoke or communicate with spirits. With a collective decision, the team set about finding a way to unlock the door. After several attempts, the padlock gave way, revealing what lay beyond. The room was unlike any other in the hotel. The walls were lined with old, faded tapestries depicting scenes of rituals and ceremonies. An altar stood at the center, surrounded by a circle of candles, long since burned out. Scattered around the room were remnants of old rituals, crystals, herbs, and arcane tools. Lisa, her voice barely above a whisper, said, This room. It's a sanctum. A place of power. The hotel was once a site of occult practices. The weight of the discovery hung heavily in the air. The team, once driven by curiosity, now grappled with the implications of their find. Ethan, deep in thought, remarked, This changes everything. The spirits, the hauntings, they might be tied to the rituals conducted here. Derek, Examining a dusty tome left on the altar, added, These practices, they weren't just for communication. They were for binding, for control. The spirits might be trapped here, bound by the rituals conducted in this very room. The team debated their next course of action. The room, with its remnants of the past, was a testament to the power of the occult. The spirits, once free, were now trapped, their energies harnessed and controlled. Jenna, her voice filled with determination, said, We need to set things right. We need to conduct a cleansing ritual, to free the spirits and restore balance. The team, united in their purpose, set about preparing for the ritual. Using the tools and herbs found in the room, they created a circle of protection. As the candles were lit, the room was bathed in a soft, golden glow. Ethan, leading the ritual, began to chant, his voice echoing through the sanctum. The team joined in, their voices rising in unison, calling out to the spirits, offering them release. As the ritual reached its climax, the room was filled with a blinding light. The spirits, once trapped, were now free, their energies released back into the hotel. The team, exhausted but elated, took a moment to reflect on their journey. The Banff Springs Hotel, with its rich history and myriad of secrets, had once again revealed its mysteries. Jenna, her voice filled with emotion, said, We came here seeking answers to give voice to the spirits that call this hotel home. And we've done just that. We've given them their freedom, their voice. Ethan, his eyes filled with pride, added, Our journey is far from over. The hotel, with its whispers of the past, will always be a place of mystery and wonder. But for now, we can rest easy, knowing we've set things right. And as dawn broke, casting the hotel in a soft, golden hue, the team knew that their journey had only just begun. The locked door was just one chapter in the rich tapestry of the Banff Springs Hotel's history, a testament to the power of the past and the promise of the future. Chapter 11 The ritual the Banff Springs Hotel, with its grandeur and history, had seen many events unfold within its walls. But none as significant and potentially dangerous as the ritual the team was about to undertake. The sanctum they had discovered hinted at practices long forgotten, and the team felt a responsibility to set things right. Gathering in the main lounge, they began preparations. Jenna had found an old tome in the hotel's library that detailed rituals used to cleanse and protect places of power. 
With this as their guide, they set about gathering the necessary items. Salt for protection, sage for cleansing, and crystals to amplify their intent. As they worked, the weight of their journey pressed upon them. Lisa, looking at the items spread out before them, said, It's hard to believe how far we've come. From skeptics to believers, from observers to participants. Ethan nodded. The spirits we've encountered, their stories, their pain. It's changed us. We owe it to them, and to ourselves, to see this through. With everything in place, the team formed a circle in the center of the lounge. Jenna, holding the tome, began to recite the incantations. The air grew heavy, charged with energy. The candles flickered, casting dancing shadows on the walls. As the ritual progressed, the team could feel the energies of the hotel shifting, aligning with their intent. But then, something changed. A cold wind swept through the room, extinguishing the candles. The protective circle of salt was disrupted, and a dark, oppressive energy filled the space. Derek, his voice filled with alarm, shouted, something's wrong. The ritual, it's not working. From the shadows, a powerful entity emerged. Its form was indistinct, but its intent was clear. Anger, resentment, and power radiated from it. Ethan, trying to maintain control, said, We need to contain it, protect the hotel. The team, drawing on their collective knowledge and experience, began to improvise. Using the crystals, they created a barrier, trying to push the entity back. But it was too strong, its power growing with every passing moment. Jenna, her voice filled with desperation, said, We need to finish the ritual, it's our only chance. The team, united in their purpose, began to recite the incantations once more. The entity, sensing their intent, lashed out, trying to disrupt their efforts. But the team held firm, their voices rising in unison, their intent clear. As the ritual reached its climax, a blinding light filled the room. The entity, its power diminished, was pushed back, contained once more. The team, exhausted but triumphant, took a moment to catch their breath. The hotel, once again at peace, stood as a testament to their determination and courage. Ethan, his voice filled with relief, said, We did it. We protected the hotel, the spirits, and ourselves. Lisa, looking around the room, added, But at what cost? We've unleashed something powerful, something we don't fully understand. Jenna, ever the historian, replied, The hotel, with its rich history and secrets, will always be a place of mystery and wonder. But we've learned an important lesson today. Some doors, once opened, can never be closed. And as the sun rose, casting the Banff Springs Hotel in a soft, golden light, the team knew that their journey was far from over. The ritual was just one chapter in their ongoing quest to understand and protect the spirits that called the hotel home. Chapter 12 The Entity's Wrath The Banff Springs Hotel once a beacon of luxury and elegance, now stood shrouded in an oppressive darkness. The grand chandeliers, which had once cast a warm glow, were now lifeless. An eerie silence enveloped the hotel, broken only by the distant, haunting whispers echoing through its corridors. The team, having regrouped in the main lounge, tried to make sense of the situation. The entity, once contained, was now free, its power amplified by the failed ritual. The hotel, and all its inhabitants, were at its mercy. Ethan, his voice filled with urgency, said, We need a plan. 
The entity is drawing power from the hotel, from its history, its memories. We need to cut it off, weaken it. Jenna, ever the historian, added, the ballroom. It's the heart of the hotel, the epicenter of its energy. If we can confront the entity there, we might have a chance. As the team made their way to the ballroom, the entity made its presence felt. Shadows danced on the walls, taking on menacing forms. The temperature dropped, and a cold wind swept through the corridors. The very fabric of the hotel seemed to warp and twist, as if trying to keep the team at bay. But they pressed on, their determination unwavering. As they reached the ballroom, they were met with a sight that took their breath away. The entity, its form now clear, stood at the center of the room. It was a swirling mass of darkness, its edges constantly shifting, its core radiating pure malevolence. Lisa, her voice filled with fear, whispered, it's stronger than we thought. We need to be careful. The team, drawing on their collective knowledge and experience, began to set up their equipment. EMF meters, spirit boxes, and infrared cameras were all brought to bear, creating a protective barrier around the entity. As the confrontation began, the entity lashed out, its power evident in every move. The team, though outmatched, held their ground, using their equipment to push the entity back. But it was the emotional depth of the confrontation that took them by surprise. The entity, feeding off their fears and past traumas, began to show them visions of their darkest moments. Jenna saw herself as a child, lost and alone. Ethan relived the loss of a loved one, the pain and guilt still fresh. Derek was confronted with a past mistake, one that had haunted him for years. But it was Lisa who made the crucial realization. It's feeding off our emotions, our pain. We need to let go, to confront our past and move on. The team, drawing strength from each other, began to let go of their fears, their traumas. They confronted their past, finding peace and acceptance. And as they did, the entity began to weaken, its power diminished. With renewed determination, the team launched a final assault. Using their equipment and their newfound understanding, they pushed the entity back, forcing it into the center of the ballroom. And then, with a final, climactic burst of energy, the entity was contained once more, its power sealed away. The team, exhausted but triumphant, took a moment to catch their breath. The hotel, once again at peace, stood as a testament to their courage and determination. Ethan, his voice filled with relief, said, We did it. We faced our fears, our past, and came out stronger. Jenna, looking around the ballroom, added, The hotel, with its rich history and secrets, will always be a place of mystery and wonder. But we've learned an important lesson today. Understanding and respect are key to appeasing the spirits that call this place home. And as dawn broke, casting the Banff Springs Hotel in a soft, golden light, the team knew that their journey was far from over. The Entity's Wrath was just one chapter in their ongoing quest to understand and protect the spirits that called the hotel home. Chapter 13 the final seance, the Banff Springs Hotel, with its towering spires and majestic architecture, had seen countless events unfold within its walls. But the grand ballroom, with its ornate chandeliers and polished floors, was about to witness a seance unlike any other. The team, having faced the wrath of the entity, felt a responsibility to understand it, to give it a voice. They set up in the center of the ballroom, forming a circle around a small table. On it lay a spirit board, 
candles, and various other tools of the trade. Ethan, his voice filled with determination, said, We need to communicate with the entity, to understand its pain, its story. Only then can we help it find peace. The candles were lit, casting a soft, flickering glow across the room. The team joined hands, their intent clear. Jenna, acting as the medium, began to recite the incantations, calling out to the entity. At first, there was silence. But then, the air grew heavy, charged with energy. The candles flickered, and a cold wind swept through the room. The entity, its presence now clear, began to communicate. Through the spirit board, it spelled out its story. It was once a guest at the hotel, a young man filled with dreams and ambitions. But a tragic accident had taken his life, leaving him trapped, his spirit bound to the hotel. Over the years, his pain and anger had grown, manifesting as the powerful entity the team had encountered. The team, their hearts heavy with empathy, listened to the entity's story. Derek, his voice filled with emotion, said, We understand your pain, your anger. But you don't have to be trapped here, bound by your past. We can help you find peace, move on. The entity, its energy now calmer, seemed to consider Derek's words. It communicated its desire to be free, to find peace. But it was afraid, unsure of what lay beyond. Lisa, her voice filled with compassion, said, Every soul, whether living or departed, has a story worth telling. Your story, your pain, is valid but you don't have to carry it with you. You can let go, find peace. The team, drawing on their collective knowledge and experience, began the ritual to help the entity move on. They created a circle of protection, using salt and sage to cleanse the space. They recited the incantations, their voices rising in unison, calling out to the spirits to guide the entity to the light. As the ritual reached its climax, the entity, its form now clear, began to fade. It communicated its gratitude, its relief. And then, with a final, blinding burst of light, it was gone. The team, exhausted but elated, took a moment to reflect on their journey. The Banff Springs Hotel, with its rich history and countless stories, had once again revealed its mysteries. Ethan, his voice filled with pride, said, We did it. We helped the entity find peace, move on. Jenna, looking around the ballroom, added, The hotel, with its whispers of the past, will always be a place of mystery and wonder. But we've learned an important lesson today. Every soul, whether living or departed, has a story worth telling. And as dawn broke, casting the Banff Springs Hotel in a soft, golden light, the team knew that their journey was far from over. The final seance was just one chapter in their ongoing quest to understand and protect the spirits that called the hotel home. Chapter 14 Reflections The morning sun streamed through the tall windows of the Banff Springs Hotel casting a warm, golden hue over the grand ballroom. The remnants of the seance from the night before still lay scattered on the polished floor, the spirit board, the extinguished candles, and the circle of salt. But the atmosphere was different now, lighter, as if the hotel itself had exhaled a long-held breath. The team sat in a circle, their faces showing a mix of exhaustion, relief, and contemplation. The ornate chandeliers above them shimmered in the sunlight, bearing silent witness to their reflections. Ethan broke the silence, his voice soft, it's been a journey unlike any other. This hotel, with its stories, 
its spirits, has taught us so much. Lisa nodded, her eyes distant. We came here as investigators, skeptics. But we're leaving with a deeper understanding, not just of the paranormal, but of ourselves. Derek, always the pragmatic one, added, We've faced our fears, confronted our past, and in doing so, we've grown. The spirits we've encountered, their stories, have changed us. Jenna, holding an old photograph she'd found in the hotel's archives, said, Every soul, whether living or departed, has a story worth telling. And it's our responsibility, our duty, to listen, to understand. The team sat in silence, lost in their thoughts. The weight of their experiences, the lessons learned, pressed upon them. The Banff Springs Hotel, with its rich history and countless stories, had left an indelible mark on their souls. Ethan, his voice filled with determination, said, We need to document our findings, share them with the world. The spirits we've encountered, their stories, deserve to be heard. Lisa, ever the writer, added, We'll write a book, a chronicle of our journey. We'll share our experiences, our reflections, with the world. The team nodded in agreement, united in their purpose. The Banff Springs Hotel, with its whispers of the past, had given them a mission, a purpose. As they packed their equipment, preparing to leave, they took one last look at the grand ballroom. The ornate chandeliers, the polished floors, all bore silent witness to their journey. Derek, his voice filled with emotion, said, Goodbye, Banff Springs Hotel. We'll never forget you. Jenna, her eyes filled with tears, added, We'll be back. We promise. And as they left, the Banff Springs Hotel stood tall, its towering spires reaching for the sky. It had seen countless events unfold within its walls, and it would see many more. But the team's journey, their reflections, would always hold a special place in its heart. Chapter 15 Departure The Grand Ballroom which had been the epicenter of so many of their experiences, was now bathed in the soft light of dawn. The ornate chandeliers cast long, shimmering shadows on the polished floors, and the room seemed to hum with the residual energy of the events that had transpired. Ethan and Lisa were meticulously packing up their equipment, ensuring that every piece was accounted for. Derek was double-checking the rooms ensuring they hadn't left anything behind, while Jenna was penning down final notes in her journal. It feels strange to leave, Lisa remarked, her voice tinged with nostalgia. This hotel, with all its mysteries and spirits, has become a part of us. Derek, emerging from one of the rooms, nodded in agreement. It's not just a location for an investigation anymore. It's a place where we've grown, learned, and connected. As they made their way to the entrance, the team felt a palpable shift in the atmosphere. The air grew colder, and a familiar, haunting melody began to play softly in the distance. Turning around, they saw the ethereal figure of the ghost bride, her silhouette illuminated by the soft glow of the ballroom lights. She didn't speak but her presence conveyed a message of gratitude. Her eyes, filled with a timeless sorrow, seemed to sparkle with newfound hope. It was clear that the team's efforts had not gone unnoticed by the spirits of the hotel. Jenna, always the empathetic one, stepped forward, her voice gentle. We hope we've helped, even if just a little. Your stories, your pain, deserve to be acknowledged and respected. The ghost bride, in a gesture of gratitude, extended her hand, letting it hover over Jenna's for a brief moment. A soft, cool breeze enveloped the team, 
and just as suddenly as she had appeared, the ghost bride vanished. The team, deeply moved by the encounter, took a moment to compose themselves. Ethan, his voice filled with emotion, said, This is a journey we'll never forget. The Banff Springs Hotel has changed us in ways we could never have imagined. As they stepped out of the hotel, the towering spires of the Banff Springs Hotel loomed overhead, standing as a testament to its rich history and countless stories. The team, their equipment packed and their hearts full, made their way to their vehicle. Derek, starting the engine, remarked, This may be the end of this chapter, but it's just the beginning of our journey. There are countless other places, other stories, waiting for us. Lisa, looking out of the window at the receding silhouette of the hotel, added, and we'll be ready. For every spirit, every story, every mystery. As they drove away, the Banff Springs Hotel stood tall and majestic, its secrets safe for now. But the team's journey was far from over, and the world was filled with mysteries waiting to be unraveled. We hope you have enjoyed our paranormal scary story about the haunted Banff Springs Hotel in Alberta, Canada. Please visit us at Paranormal Untold Stories. Come to listen to more of our scary stories collection. Paranormal Untold Stories encourages you to contact us if you have your own untold story that you would like our professionals team to put online as a scary story. Thank you. Please follow our YouTube channel, Paranormal, Untold Stories, and encourage others to do the same. Paranormal, Untold Stories.